the Charlie Reimer Golf Show, starring Charlie Reimer. Hey, okay, let's pick up the tempo. Charlie Reimer here, and welcome to my new show, where we do things my way. <laughs> As a former golf pro and media personality, I know golf. But this isn't going to be your grandfather's golf show. I'm bringing you conversations with celebs and golf greats, getting off the course and out on the water, and even getting into some good eats. This is the Charlie Reimer Golf Show. Keep it in the fairway, folks. I'm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, at the Barefoot Resort. This is the Tom Fazio course. Today, my guest is Zevi Perez. He's 12 years old and a heck of a player, but he's an even better young man. I love him, and you will too. This is Riding with Reimer. Zevi Perez, where you been, kid? I've been looking for you How you doing, everywhere. <laughs> All right, let's see you hit this one, and then we're gonna get out on the golf course. Sounds good. All right. Let's do this. Let's see it, kid. Nice shot. We're gonna see that all day long. Get in the cart. Let's go, kid. Let's do this. Now, I feel a little silly because I'm about to ask a 12-year-old mm -hmm. when they got started in golf. Don't, don't, be, don't feel silly, sir. This is a favorite question. So I actually started since I was two and competing since I was three. You know, my family, we actually lived in Louisiana. We lived on a golf course, which was pretty convenient. Mm -hmm. And you know, I just see everyone you know, getting out there, hitting golf shots, bombing balls down the middle and became memorized by the game ever since. And when, you know, my dad went, cause he tried to get me into baseball and I didn't, he brought me the gloves, the bats, all the gear. By the time he went on um, deployed and he came back, I was a full blown golfer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know your mom and dad are with you a lot. You play a lot of tournaments. I met you through the Veteran Golfers Association, yes, which is based in, in uh, Pinehurst and uh, that, Veteran Golfers Association serves over 10,000 vets and their families. Yes. You're the and their families part. Tell me a little bit about your experience with the Veteran Golfers Association. It's just such such a cool place to be in. If it wasn't for the Veterans Golf Association and me meeting, you know, a very close friend of mine, Mr. Josh Payton and Miss Rachel Payton, I wouldn't be sitting in the cart with you right now. Boy, they're great folks, aren't they? Yes, sir. They're the best. Your, your dad served on the U.S. Army Special Forces for 33 years, is that right? Yes, sir. Wow, that's quite a career. Yes, he's such, such an amazing parent, and my mom, you know, is such is a saint to me. You know, she's the one who keeps me in line to, hey, you better stay humble. Yeah, she's going to do that for a long time, too. Yes, yes sir. <laughs> and, you know, my father, before, before I had my coach, he was my coach, and he taught me, you know, the fundamentals, the basics. And I'm just so blessed to have two loving, dedicated parents on my side. Now, how many golf tournaments have you won? Are you even tracked how many that you won? I have over 300 wins, sir. Wow. Over 300 What do you wins. do with all of those trophies? I got a, we're running out of room. We have a trophy case, but I'm starting to, starting to get it pretty full. That's a good problem to have, isn't it? Yes, sir. <laughs> you like playing in the wind? Yes, it's like, for me, it's like, for how my swing works, yeah. the wind is like perfect. Here, let me get this driver out. I can't hit, but I can pull the club out for you. You got all the cool gear, you know that? Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> all right, I know you hadn't played in a couple days. I want to see what you got here. All right, let's do it. Now, we're playing a little into the wind here. Do you have like a shot that you hit into the wind, or you go just, just blow it right through it? Right through it, sir. Right through it. All right, let's see it. So here's what's so cool. Your fundamentals, and you know this, are really good, but it all starts with the grip. That's one of the most important parts of the game because you can't grip, you can't swing. And my grip is not nothing fancy or anything. It's just set up with my right hand, pick out my target, and then once I feel like comfortable, like, like you know, I think this is a comfortable position, then I interlock, so like you see like right there. Jack Nicklaus interlock. Tiger Woods interlock. Locks, all the great. Chevy Perez interlocks. You might ought to think about an interlock, folks. <laughs> and then it's pretty easy. You just set up, take the target out, and swing away. God, that is so good. Thank you you want to get better at this game? Copy that grip right there, folks. Copy it. This kid's the real deal. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, sir. Nice. 
Stinking wind don't bother you, does it? No, sir. It's kind of my thing. <laughs> now, now, who are your, I'm sure you get this question a million times, but I want to know, favorite golfers and why? I love um, Mr. Ricky Fowler. Mm -hmm. He's one of my favorites. Mr. Bryson DeChambeau. Okay. Mr. Cameron Champ, and obviously Mr. Tiger Woods. There Come you on. go. Okay, he's, he's so one of the best. so let's start with Ricky. But there's one more though. Okay. There's a junior golfer that you know I follow, and I try to be just like him. You know what it is? Is he got a last name of Woods? You. Oh, I I appreciate that. Have you met any of the older players? You know, a little closer to my age, some veterans and that sort of stuff. Because all the guys you're talking about are the young guys. Yes, sir. Who are some of the favorite guys you met, maybe a little bit older? So I met Mr. Eric Compton. Yeah. He's a very, very good golfer. He's a, a double heart transplant recipient. Did you know that? Yes, sir. Yeah, really good player. And, uh, and, and a very, it's a, such a gentleman, too. Mm -hmm. Very amazing person. How do you play all these golf tournaments? You have outside interest. Yes, sir. Obviously, you're practicing a lot. You, you you got to do the school thing, too. How do you go about doing that? So mainly on school, I'm actually homeschooled. I do Georgia okay. Connections Academy. So a regular day of school would be, you know, I wake up, say, about 7, 7.30, and I have yeah. three classes. Probably I'll do, let's say, math, probably 9 o'clock all the way to 11. See, I, if I were doing math, I'd do it from, like, 9 o'clock to, like, 9.02. That'd be enough math for me. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, I eat my lunch, and we head straight over to the course, and I'll practice all the way to sundown. And if the teacher like needs me, because we actually have a big conversion van, it's a big blue van. We call it the X Man, the mm -hmm. X Man Mobile. Yeah. I'll do my schoolwork in there. Wow, sounds like you guys have got it figured out. Yes, sir. Now you're just 12. I know you love playing golf. You've had a lot of success. Looking forward, what 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 are some of the, your goals that you have? Um, what ultimate dream is to definitely play golf on tour. Mm -hmm. I also like to play, you know, college golf and hopefully get a tour card. And one thing is for sure, you know, the I like to win the major, sir. You gotta you gotta aim big, right? It's either go big or go home. All right, we got a par three here. 152 yards into the wind. What club is that for you? Definitely a hit a seven nine. I'd put you on a six. We'll see what we come up with. I told you it was a six. <laughs> <laughs> Good swing, though. Thank you, sir. When I was your age, you know, we didn't have Golf Channel. Um, there really wasn't much of a source for learning about golf. It would just be like the old grumpy guys at the golf course, <laughs> you know, that would pass down the stories. But your age, if you want to learn something about golf, golf courses, players, history, architecture, all of that's available to you. Have you thought much about architecture, what kind of courses you like? You like the newer courses, older courses, or you just like to get out on any course? I say there's uh, most of the courses I played that are my favorites. I played uh, Pebble Beach. Yeah. Walter Shaw, I met you there. I got my yep. fifth hole in one. We did. Yeah, and you're 12. Yes, sir. Uh huh. Yeah, fifth, Saint, fifth Saint, hole in one. He's 12. One of my favorites too. <laughs> yeah, you got some good ones on that list. And I'm gonna give you a piece of advice, okay? Yes, sir. This game has already taken you to a lot of really neat places. Make sure that. As you travel the world, that you take some time and some photos and maybe write some stuff down, and and uh, you'll see a, a lot. I try to do the same thing when when I was playing the PGA Tour. My wife and I would travel together, and I'd take one day a week off, and I would go see something, thinking it might be the only chance I ever get to see it. In some cases, that was right. Like if I were playing in San Diego, I'd go over to the San Diego Zoo with my wife that day. I'd take oh. a day off and enjoy the world because golf is great in that you get to see the world, but a lot of people get so caught up in golf, see the hotel and the golf course and the hotel and the golf course, and you could be in a really cool place and not even know it. So get out and see some things when you're getting a chance to travel the world. And, and the other thing is you need to come out of your shell and be a little bit nicer to people. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on that a little bit. How about that, buddy? <laughs> 
All right, I want to see one more great drive from you. Got a little par four here. You should be able to handle this. And water comes in a little bit on the left. It doesn't bother you, does it? No, sir. I didn't think so. That's how you hit a golf ball. Kaboom, baby! <laughs> All right, Chevy, last chance to make another birdie today. That looks a little slow to me. You gonna make sure you get it there? I can't leave it short. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> can't make them all, kid. I'm gonna give you the rest of that one. Hey, really appreciate you coming oh. and spending time with us here at Myrtle Beach. Thank you so much for having me, sir. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. Sir. I think you, uh, you're you going to get this game figured out one of these days, and we can't wait to see where this game takes you. Oh, thank you so much for the kind words, sir. You got it, kid. Yes, sir. Let's get out of here and get us some lunch. I'll buy you a cheeseburger. How about that? Sounds good, sir. All right. <laughs>
but I'm doing it when I'm healthy. I, I'd much rather do it when I'm healthy and I feel like I can you know, have a better chance of, of, of letting the, the medicine do what it's supposed to do, my body help. And, I, and I'm convinced that my early detection is what's going to get me through this whole process. And I know for a lot of people going in and getting that colonoscopy, there's some embarrassment to it, there's some stigma to it. But between it saving your life, and I, and I feel like it's, it's going to save mine, it's something that we got to get the word out. Hey, get in. Let these great medical people do what they do. Find these things early. They've got tools to treat it. So while, while I'm not, not happy about the situation, I, I feel like I'm blessed in that they got it very, very early. Yeah, well, you know, the same thing for me. They got it early enough, and I was lucky, no chemo, no radiation. But let me tell you, the only way you're going to be successful in anything that you do, you can't do it alone. You've got your wife. She's the RN, right? I had my Janet uh, with the greatest positive attitude in the world. Basically, the first thing is get over your pity party, get over feeling sorry for yourself, and then let's go. Let's beat this damn thing. Yeah, what a great piece of advice. Put me in, Coach. Hand me. I already got the ball. I just got. I got to run with that. <laughs> Let the experts do their thing. Stay positive. You whip this thing. I'm going to whip it too. Get on that proper diet. Do some exercising. I was in fantastic shape when I was in 55. I felt like I could have done anything still. And, um, and and that's what enabled me to get out of the hospital in three days. Those are those are words that I don't want to hear, but I need to hear. I got a little bit of work to do on the shape. I've been up and down and uh, doing a little bit better with it now. But I get hungry, Vince. I get hungry. There's a lot of good eating down here in Myrtle Beach. I got to push that push that plate away a few times. But I want to finish <laughs> and let, let's circle back around to golf. You're you're an 18 handicap. What's the best score and what course? I'm I'm, I'm always curious about that. Well, the, the best score at, at which course was one of the Jaworski courses. And I lived on a golf course when I was playing for the Eagles back then. It was Ramblewood. And uh, the best score that I ever scored, ironically, was an 83. And it was at Ramblewood, you know, and it was it, it was pretty good. But I, I'm a bogey guy. I, I, I strive for that bogey golf. That's it, you know, and 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 something that's manageable. Uh, but my, my goal is uh, my goal is um, just bogey, man. And I'm a happy guy. If I, if I, if I break 90, 95. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm there. Let's go. That's a good day. It's about being in a beautiful place and being with people yeah. you want to spend time with. Because other than about 15 people on the planet, let's face it, there's none of us that are really very good at this game. <laughs> yeah. In this day and age, how are you going to get four, four and a half hours with people you want to spend time with doing anything else other than golf? Uh -huh. it, it's just not going to happen. Just enjoy everything around it. It's right. it's part of you know nature, and to me, it's it, it's it, it's just a fulfillment of life, and and I love it. And don't take it too seriously, and enjoy having it. Well, Vince Papali, thank you so much for sharing your story, sharing your inspiration. Uh, it, it it's been really neat getting to spend a little bit of time with you. I look forward to maybe one of these days you and I getting to tee it up on a golf course somewhere and, uh, and and spend a nice day together. But thank you so much for being with us here on the Charlie Rahmer Golf Show. All right, good luck, in your, good, good luck in your treatment as well. You can do this, you know that. Appreciate it, Vince. If you want to see my entire interview with Vince Papali, check that out over at playgolfmyrtlebeach.com. Beach Golf in Myrtle Beach. I'm showing off and playing some of our best courses, all while giving you some advice for your game. This is Charlie's Golf Tips. 13th hole here at TPC Myrtle Beach. Absolutely spectacular par three. Measures 205 yards, and I know what you're thinking. Oh no, I gotta hit a long iron. Well, folks get all worked up over hitting long irons, and they're really not that big a deal anymore. It's all kinds of technology in here, perimeter weighting, big sweet spot. It's not that hard to hit a long iron anymore. And when you're playing off a of par three, go ahead and get that ball teed up a little bit higher than what you might think you need to. That'll help you get the ball elevated even more. Let's see what we got here. We'll try to sweep it off of that tee. That should get this ball flying really high. Look out, hole. Need the right number, baby. Well, sadly, that comes up just a little bit short. 
but what that does is give me a chance to show you how to hit a really cool chip shot. Pretty tough situation here. Closely mown area. The grain of this grass is growing against me. It's really sticky. Have a lot of options. I could take a lob wedge, throw it up top, try and spin it. I could putt it. I've seen people take like a hybrid or a five wood and try and run it up there. I don't like any of those plays. For me, the easiest way to tackle this shot is to grab my seven iron and I'm gonna put my putting grip on it. And as I set up to the golf ball, I'm gonna pull the heel up off the turf and go toe down. And the idea is I hit the ball out towards the toe. That means it'll have no spin on it. I want it to land a bounce or two short of the putting surface, kick up on the putting surface, and then roll like a putt. See, that's not that hard. Three's never a bad score on 13 at TPC Myrtle Beach. Competition. In our world, it's natural. Even outside of sports, we're always competing. But remember, it's easy to lose sight of the journey when you're too intensely focused on the destination. Life is like golf. All you can do is play the shot that's right in front of you. Enjoy the ride. Hope you enjoyed the Charlie Romer Golf Show. Keep it in a fairway, folks. What are you doing? We finished taping this show two hours ago. It's time for you to go home. <laughs> From everybody at the Charlie Reimer Golf Show, keep it in the fairway, folks. Especially you. <laughs> <laughs>